I think uh, so. If you all have notes or not, mm -hmm. so I will use my notes uh, to help you in quickly revising this NDOF chapter. And then next sitting we can have continuous structures, and then next time we can have randomization. But there is one main question every time in Dr. Fanning's final paper about the formulation of equation of motion for multiple video film systems. So, okay, I will just have to show them. Can we do like this that we can all sit on one table? You can come and I can just directly from the notes I can explain to the people. So I can sit like this. Once the semester will complete, I will download all of them for my future reference. It's a great job, uh, saving and you know all the all the coursework of AIT. He does it. She does it every time. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, you will also do it for earthquake engineering next time, next semester. I uh, all all will. Ex you know, you are very famous in seniors also. They they know that there is a. There is a student who is making all the videos, videos. <laughs> and, and we, we, we are thankful to you for this service. <laughs> so okay, uh, in the first part of the course what you did was, uh, you first uh, analytically calculated or determined the response of a single degree of freedom system under different types of loading. The very first chapter was free vibration which was without any loading and then you start systematically making the loading complex uh, you go to the harmonic loading then periodic loading then impulse and finally you you saw that how we can determine the response for a general complex loading so um, and at the last part of this this first whole single degree of freedom system thing it was uh, time stepping methods uh, which uh, which use the incremental form of governing equation of motion to solve the the system so now from this i will not uh, go to that part because i think it was up till midterm the single degree of freedom system thing so now i will uh, move to multiple degree of freedom systems uh, the actual structures of course they are multiple degree of freedom systems so um, the first step is to formulate the governing equations of motion for uh, for that complex more than one degree of freedoms. So there are two basic approaches. Uh, what we did in single degree of freedom system was that use the D. Lambert's principle to formulate the equation, which says that a system is always remain in equilibrium. Uh, in whatever condition it is dynamic equilibrium that uh, if the sum of all the forces acting on a system is not equal to zero it, their resultant will cause acceleration in the system and if you uh, apply the same force uh, which is causing that acceleration which is equal to ma in the opposite direction to the system if you count that as a force in reverse direction then the system will be in dynamic equilibrium this is what d lambert's principle says that you sum all these inertial force, uh, static force and damping force, you sum them equal to the external force. 
So we were using that approach in single degree of freedom systems, but here we can have two parallel uh, approaches to formulate the governing equations, differential equations. One is the direct dynamic equilibrium that you just uh, make the free body diagrams of. Uh, can I write something here? Okay. Here I can. Okay. Maybe yeah, this is better. So if, for example, the actual structure is like this. For example, this is a two or three story building. So it has main mass concentrated on its floors. So we can idealize this structure as a three degree of freedom system. Uh, you can always think of a single degree of freedom in, in contrast. Okay, So here we have, for example, we have three masses M, M, M. So they can move in three possible ways. Uh, this M can move, this M can move and this. So there are three degrees of freedom, for example, if you are considering only uh, the later direction which is one degree of freedom per mass. So uh, in this case, we can, what we can do, one approach is that we can um, have a section here, have a section here, make a free body diagram for this part, for this part, for this part and consider the equilibrium and uh, using that again D. Lambert's principle you formulate the uh, equations of motion there will be more than one in this case obviously the, it is a kind of a three degree of freedom system but there is another approach which you will use in these uh, class handouts that is energy approach which in which you use three or four main principles one is the principle of virtual work uh, variational principle uh, but this uh, we using an example Dr. Pennant show that this uh, helps in formulating the equation of motion for a static case in a case of a beam then is Hamilton's principle and then Lagrange's equation of motion using that Hamilton's principle so these principles these uh, things we will use uh, to come up with the equation of motion that will that will, that will govern the the movement of a multiple degree of freedom system and then next step will be the solution of those equations so uh, the first step will be used in energy approach uh, there are uh, differences you can, uh, you can study this thing and some of the dif dif differences between both approaches you will understand later when you, uh, you know both of these using actual examples so um, This approach can be applied to both linear and non-linear structures. The difference will be that in the governing equation plus KU is equal to some dynamic force dependent on time. This relation KU is valid only for elastic or linear systems. In, in case of a non-linear problem, if the, 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 the material which this structure is made of is having a non-linear force deformation behavior or stress strain behavior then this relation will not be strictly valid this will be some non-linear function between f and u this is equal to this is in fact uh, static force is equal to ku this this part of the equation but this part will change if the structure is non-linear non-linear means that it is um, it is using some or it is exhibiting the behavior which, which is not a straight line between force and deformation or any parameter of force and deformation maybe stress and strain maybe moment and curvature whatever so um, another uh, thing is that uh, important thing in the, in the difference between these two approaches is that we will use a generalized coordinates uh, or physical coordinates here in energy approach uh, I will explain what this really mean but here you, you can only use physical coordinates so I will explain the difference uh, what, what we really mean by using generalized coordinates uh, some uh, basic concepts I will not go into detail of all this uh, which, which are kind of a prerequisites how to determine the kinetic energy of a, of a system if, it is a, if the system is of just one mass particle having mass m and uh, it is free in space in all three directions having velocity components as um, u, v and w 
dot is the derivative the derivative with respect to displacement so this using this equation you will determine its kinetic energy it's obvious and if it is a kind of a discrete multiple degree of freedom systems like this which has three masses but each mass can move only in one direction the lateral direction having a displacement u1 u2 and u3 so you can simply uh, determine 1 over 2 m u u dot square means velocity square for all three things for all three masses and just sum them up this is the thing you will use in your final exam paper he will give a multiple degree of freedom system uh, and ask you to formulate the equation of motion for that so i will explain later that in order to determine that equation you need the kinetic and the kinetic energy and potential energy and their derivatives three or four major terms you have to first determine and then put in the Lagrange's equation to, to have the equations similarly if it is a continuous beam you will use this equation if it is a volume having a it's a 3d structural system having volume v you will use this so they all are obvious uh, you can easily see what they really mean in a linear spring, uh, similarly, if, if it is a linear spring, then the strain energy, there is one new concept. The one is kinetic energy, then one is potential, then strain energy. Potential is mgh simply. Strain is 1 over 2 k into uh, displacement scale. Uh, it is also, deter this is the strain energy is also the area under the curve of a force deformation. If we have a displacement u and f so and if this is the graph the area under the curve will be strain energy so if it is a straight line elastic problem then 1 over 2 k u square its derivation you can see here easily i hope you don't have problems in deriving these small small things so i will just explain the concepts what the equation really is saying what is important for uh, future whatever the problems so similarly here he derived the strain energy for an element of volume, whole volume, we take a small increment and integrate it over the whole thing and get this expression for the rate of change of strain energy in a volume. If it is an axially loaded bar, then the same equation will simplify further if it is having a force Q, you can simply replace the Q over A of the stress term in the volume part and you can get a simplified equation for uh, strain energy U. So uh, right now what these four or five uh, topics were to determine T and U for uh, different cases. Uh, starting from the most simplest one in which you have just one point having M to the actual situations where there can be a multiple degree of freedom system, there can be a continuous beam. So using these relationships you will uh, determine the, the kinetic and potential, uh, kinetic energy and strain energy for different cases. So if it is a for example bending strain energy in beam having a deflected shape uh, which is also changing with distance from one end and also changing with time. So the, this de de deformation W is a function of both X and T. So you can uh, using the bending stress sigma is equal to m y over i and doing some mathematics you can come up with an expression for uh, strain energy of a beam, bending beam and gravitational potential is mgh. Uh, you can ask if, if uh, you want to know some, something extra about a particular topic. Okay, now the generalized coordinates. What does it mean, really? Uh, consider a discrete system of n degree of freedom systems. For example, there is a system which has three in, in this example or n number of uh, degrees of freedom. Means uh, it has m, n points which can move in one direction each. So there are n possible ways of movement of these points. Uh, if you directly determine for example or consider this displacement values u1, u2, u3 
and they will have some real physical values and they will mean something for example u1 u2 u3 uh, they have values 3 2 or 1 uh, you can physically understand what this 1 2 3 mean uh, you can you looking at these values you can deform you can imagine a deform shape also so if you have this u1 u2 u3 value these are physical displacements at a point i u i physical values having some real sense uh, the displacement of number of degree of n degree of freedom system can also be defined by a different set of coordinates which is defined here as q such that relation between q and u is linear uh, what we are doing now here is and i will explain later that why why is it important why is it important to do this is that we are doing this that converting u1 u2 u3 or un having physical meaning converting them to another coordinate system or another uh, generalized displacement values which are denoted here as q1 q2 q3 such that the relation between u and q is this one that u is equal to uh, some vector into q1 plus some vector into q2 plus some vector into q3 what is this equation saying is that this general u or which was in actually u1 u2 u3 u4 etc etc what what i am doing here is now u1 it was one one displacement of the for example top node of a 3 degree of freedom system this was u1 this was u2 and this was u3 what i am doing now is that i am a kind of a decomposing or writing or expanding the u1 in terms of some addition of three or four or number of quantities each quantity is having two terms one is the kind of an amplitude and the other is the kind of thing which is taking care of the deformed shape so i am saying that for example if i write the first equation uh, okay I, I will explain from this general equation this is very important to understand that the general displacement u which is comprised of u1 u2 u3 or un it is it can be random it can be any but what we are doing is we are decomposing it into summation of n number of terms but each term has a specific now uh, a format that each term has two quantities multiplying each other one is a vector which defines the shape other is the vector other is a uh, quantity which is defining the uh, amplitude and uh, for example uh, this u the, which was which was general displacement which was a uh, function of both displace uh, time as well as the deformed shape because u is a general displacement vector which varies with uh, its shape varies also and during time also so it has two kind of a, a, a parts that it it is a kind of a deformed shape containing u1 u2 u3 okay it will have kind of a you know it it is a vector containing u1 u2 u3 so at any time there will be one fixed vector u1 u2 u3 which will define one deformed shape but at next time interval this deformed shape will change so what we are doing is that we are decomposing this general u which can have any possible deformed shape we are decomposing it in, into some contributions of uh, other regular kind of deformed shapes for example it is saying that this u is q1 times first deformed shape q2 times second deformed shape which we can assume any so for example if the general u was like this this is the for example the at one time interval the u1 u2 u3 un values were such that the deform deformed shape was this so, but this is at a fixed time fixed time and this will vary with time so what we are doing now is we are saying that this time varying irregular u 
is equal to some deformed shape value which is a bit regular and I'll, I will explain what, what deformed shape values we select multiplied by it has a contribution of 2 plus another deformed shape multiplied by 0 0.5 plus another deformed shape multiplied by 0 0.1 so what we are doing is we are decomposing this irregular deformed shape into some weightage into okay so it, it this this expression is now saying that okay this shape has a this much contribution into the final irregular vibration shape uh, this shape has a this much contribution and this shape has a this much contribution so these numbers or these contributions are in fact q1 q2 q3 or the generalized displacements yeah. amplitude yeah amplitude or the factor which is accounting for the contribution of a particular shape into the final shape and the and uh, the, this shape itself is phi it is defined by phi so it phi is a vector which is defining a particular vibration shape a fixed shape okay and q is a time varying function so what the amplitude is varying with time and shape is also so the change in shape is taken care by the phi and the uh, amplitude vari variation in the in the time domain is taken care by this this q thing so we expanded the general uh, u vector which which was time varying as well as uh, deformed shape varying we divide it into summation of some terms one term takes care of the vibration shape and the other term is a takes care of the amplitude which changes with time so we introduce q because of to, to be convenient to be convenient or uh, we have a lot of benefits of this notion we, I will explain later that how this expansion of u, general u vector into individual terms helps in solving the problem in fact. It, it was necessary or something. So generally uh, q1 holds higher weightage and it decreases at uh, Yeah, generally yeah, you can say this that uh, in actual it happens in building, building cases that the irregular response of a building you decompose into a contribution from some shapes so for example studying this irregular shape is different but difficult sorry but studying with this some kind of regular shape is is okay so uh, the basic idea is apart from this thing the basic idea in building structures is that irregular response of a of a multiple degree of freedom system building uh, we decompose into some regular shapes contribution of some regular shapes or more precisely some regular sim simple harmonic motions so uh, a thing can just like do this 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 is the most simplest simple harmonic motion and the other one is this one that something like this that it do like this so the idea is to uh, change or uh, expand this u into contributions from some regular shapes having different contributions towards the final shape so studying these shapes individually or now i can use the word the, the mode shapes uh, studying individual mode shapes is easier than uh, studying the whole complex irregular response so, uh, can you can you say now that let's say we, the, we have an integral freedom Okay. system mm -hmm. so can we say that uh, we, we have n degrees the uh, entire entire number of mode shapes here? yeah yeah we will have in fact uh -huh. and what are these mode shapes we will i will explain in the next two three pages that uh, they, they have some particular properties which we can exploit to to make the problem more simple uh -huh. so we will have n degree of freedom n shapes n contribution from n shapes mm -hmm. if the problem is of n degree of freedom system okay. If it is of three, it will have three shapes. Mm -hmm. Because you know, see, it's, it's simple. For example, if these are, this is a three degree of freedom system. Now it has u1, u2, u3. Now any possible, draw any possible combination of u1, u2, u3. For example, one combination can be they, that they all are positive and 
all are negative maybe there is one case in that case the the deformed shape will be something like this or if they all are negative or in this side the, the deformed shape can be like this both of these cases will uh, correspond to one shape if they all are positive the it is a kind of a fundamental sway in one direction if they are all negative in another direction another possibility can be that u3 is positive and all these are negative in that case the deformed shape will be like this in another case you can find any combination so so it means if we have three degree of freedom so we have uh, three by three vector mode shape of three by three yeah vector. mode shapes mathematically i will explain later in this next chapter but the idea is that you will have three shapes which will contribute to any possible uh, shape of this uh, irregular shape of this because this u3 can move in this direction this u2 u1 so any possible combination of u1 u2 u3 will be covered by these three simple harmonic motion shapes so if you draw any irregular shape which will have any values of u1 u2 u3 you can always say that this shape has a uh, for example a times contribution of this shape plus b times contribution of some other shape plus c time contribution of the third shape so you can always decompose any any uh, at any time the irregular shape into composed contributions from three shapes same is the case with n degree of freedom system and this is what this equation says that uh, and those contribution this q's are the generalized coordinates these are in fact the you if you think these are in fact the displacements but for only one shape so um, for example it is just like this that in it is just anal anal analogous to this uh, single degree of freedom system case in which you calculate the response in, in for um, periodic loading that if you are giving a periodic load of uh, like this irregular uh, having a some some period uh, what you did is you decomposed using fourier series you decompose this periodic loading into some addi additional terms that this irregular function ir not irregular in fact periodic function is equal to sum of this plus this plus this plus this and you now you take one term and if you draw that one term maybe it is like this the other term maybe is like um, something like this other term but if you keep on adding the terms the shape will uh, approach to the, the to the actual periodic function same is the case here the irregular shape which is the response we say that okay this first mode shape now i can use the word mode shape first mode shape multiplied by uh, 0.75 plus uh, the second mode shape multiplied by 0.15 plus remaining how much is 1715 and the next uh, let's say uh, 0.2 0.1 times the third mode shape so the maximum contribution will be from first mode shape second shape has a 0.15 15% contribution third is 10% contribution so if you add these three shapes into these much uh, um, i mean proportions you will find the irregular of that shape and now i was saying that this q1 q is in fact again a vector q1 q2 q3 which is the displacement for one shape okay so if this is this was the first mode q so q1 q2 q3 will be the displacement at these levels which were previously where was u1 u2 u3 now there will be q1 q2 q3 but the shape will be first mode shape second mode shape third mode shape similar so this is very important equation u is equal to summation of phi into q so once we go into general and now we can using this equation we can always shift our problem from u coordinates to q coordinates if we if we find or calculate or determine or assume whatever the the phi vectors the deformed shapes in which we want to decompose our response into okay and most of the times in fact all the times these deformed shapes are the simple harmonic motions Uh, which i uh, uh, draw here so uh, in matrix form if you write this equation if if you write in the summation form then the equation will be this 
if you write in the matrix form it will be the u vector n by 1 is equal to the phi vector n by n which is a now this is a u is equal to this is some n by n phi vector which is a combination of all shapes you consider okay or if it is a n then n shapes so n by n so each one column is a vector if you draw this vector you will uh, along the y axis you will get a deformed shape second shape third shape n shapes so this whole n by n vector is a phi vector or the modal uh, mode shape vector uh, sorry mode shape matrix this time into some q q1 q2 q3 q4 q1 q this is also n by 1 so in matrix form the, that first equation will be this if you multiply second equation will be this so so now this this uh, this is the most important sentence i think of modal analysis for multiple degree of freedom system if phi is properly chosen which means this shapes the equation of motion in terms of q i are uncoupled this is the most important sentence and what it means is if you using d alembert's principle just like what he i uh, i can show you using d alembert's principle if you determine the equation of motion for a multiple degree of freedom system for example this is n degree of freedom system and okay for example two two degree of freedom consider so if you are just using without using energy approach uh, just uh, you want to determine the equation of motion without damping also what you will do is uh, okay you will assume that okay m2 mass m1 mass having displacement u2 and u1 having dynamic forces p2 and p1 you will just uh, have one section here and uh, draw the free body diagram for both masses m1 and m2 and determine individually the inertial force and the static force if you are not considering dynamic force okay for example so you will uh, see that okay the total static force will be equal to the static force for one mass so k1 u1 plus the second mass which will have displacement equal to the difference of two okay so if if it has a u1 and u2 displacements so u u1 minus u2 will be the displacement for m2 okay so for m2 you will uh, dis, you know subtract both displacements Oh, okay what, whatever without going into detail when you finally formulate the equation of motion in terms of m1 u1 that form and you convert equations into matrix form you will find that okay there will be one mass matrix there will be one acceleration matrix just like um, you write it into plus uh, k u sorry this is without that is equal to some uh, p all these are matrices whatever notation okay you use I have to pen use this one okay so you will find that uh, this k matrix will have some off diagonal terms off diagonal terms means that uh, it is it is have it has some terms in the diagonal but it's it still have some terms here here and here these all will not be zero it means when you write this again into equation form and from equation form you also can see that first equation cannot be solved independently because it is containing a term which is coming in 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 the second equation also uh, for example here uh, for if, if it if it does it has all the diagonal terms and these are all zero zero zeros when you multiply this first row with first column here and then equate it with the column here you will get a uh, you will get a kind of a equation which can directly solve but this you cannot directly solve uh, for example here in first equation u2 is coming in second equation u1 is coming because the equation the displacement of u1 and u2 are dependent because they are joined their one structure Complete. Coupled. This is what, what is mean. What is called by coupled equations. That these two equations, which because of this, you know, this assembly, this coupling comes from this assembly. This was one structure. So displacement. If you write the equations, 
you will have both equations having both u1 and u2 you will not have one equation in u1 terms and other equation in u2 terms so these are coupled equations which cannot be solved separately one by one if there is n degree of freedom system this k matrix will have of diagonal terms they are not independent right? they are not independent yeah that's what i wanted to say that they are coupled coupled means cannot be solved separately so uh, even if you want to solve this matrix you will say that okay if you write first equation first row first column plus first row first column is equal to first so you will have k1 and k2 both and u1 and u2 both so so we can also say that we have two unknown first equation and two unknown second so we need two equations exactly, exactly. to solve these two equations yeah. this is the uh, the biggest problem in structural dynamics for multiple degree of freedom systems if you have n degree of freedom system you will have n equations all will be coupled some can be uncoupled but all will be coupled you cannot solve them one by one for example if you are using if say if you say that i have 100 degree of freedom system but only five first five shapes five mode shapes are contributing maximum 99% to the final deformed shape so i can solve only five equations first five you cannot do this uh, without in, in this current form in current form because all equations are coupled to each other okay so now they come to that sentence which i said the most important one it says that the benefit of going from u to q is benefit of decomposing this into this notion is that if v is properly chosen the deformed shapes contributions were properly selected the function because they will also be some shape functions so if they were properly selected and incorporated the equation of motions if you write in terms of q i the generalized coordinates they become they are uncoupled they they will have a form in which they can be solved one by one so for first mode you can solve just first equation for second mode you solve on second equation no need to go third fourth consider not no need to consider them together this is the the benefit of this thing so, it so it i will that we have if we have three degree of freedom system yeah. and we have three nodes yeah. and we have this three displacements okay. and, we, and the contribution of each displacement will divide into three components by using one mode shape we can calculate the u1 no need you, to no, no, you will have like this yeah you are you are seeing right so for example if you have if you have u1 u2 u3 yes, you will decom you will have some phi yes. this is phi which will be 3 by 3 in this case and there will be one vector uh, which will be 3 by 1 which is the q1 q2 q3 three three terms q1 q2 q3 so this sentence is saying that if this phi which are the shapes they are selected properly how properly we will see later then uh, and you convert this equation which was in u convert it into q using inverse and whatever i will see so this whole matrix equation will become uncoupled all the diagonal terms will become zero for k and m and if you write them again into equation form you will have something like this in some m into q1 dot dot plus some k term into q1 dot plus sorry not k if if, if you add the damping term is equal to some force so what does this equation mean this is uncoupled now now equation which is in q1 q2 is not coming here q2 is not affecting this equation the second row second column you multi, you will multiply you will get something in q2 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 third row third column you will see q3. so when you convert this from u to q you will find you will have equations which are which have only diagonal terms in matrix form or which are uncoupled in equation form so the benefit is that you just solve you just consider it as a one single degree of freedom system which is which has nothing to do with q2 q3 q4 whatever just consider that this is one degree of freedom system having a displacement q1 and solve that equation for whatever the force is and get the response for for example 2 3 4 5 uh, modes what whatever you want to consider the number and just sum them to get the final irregular or random shape of the of your multiple degree of freedom system
so uh, you, you are exploiting this notion to decompose a multiple degree of freedom system in one coordinate system u1 u2 u3 into a summation of single degree of freedom systems in another coordinate system q1 q2 q3 q4 whatever so uh, and how is it possible we will see in next things uh, same thing i will not okay because this took a lot of time this is for discrete structures in which you use summation and uh, three degree of freedom system example same thing he did is for for continuous structures here same thing uh, in, but this time instead of having from 1 to n he is using 1 to infinity and again the same phi which is a shape shape function he is he is not using the term mode shape here because he will introduce it separately next topic so shape function some shape multiplied by generalized coordinate which will in fact tell how much the contribution of this shape and sum all the shapes to get a general displaced function which is a function of both displacement and time also so uh, now here a new thing is that and this can be applied to this discrete systems also that uh, now we we have a, we have choices to select this phi phi function phi matrix which is a common each column of which is a shape shape vector uh, we how to select this or how to properly choose this it should be such that because it should be such that which should uh, follow the boundary conditions of your actual structure for example uh, if your actual structure is fixed at the base you cannot decompose its irregular response into some shape which is not fixed at the base which is not zero at the base so whatever uh, shape you assume as a phi as a candidate of phi it should start from a zero so one is this uh, rule that it should satisfy the boundary conditions mm -hmm. uh, he showed in case of a beam that it has four boundary conditions uh, one is the uh, two are that the displacement here and here are zero which is u at um, the the the, the, the shape, shape functions should be such that their values at this point and this point should be zero so if phi is a shape function and uh, at zero length it should have zero value at l length it should have zero value similarly the rotation also should be rotation or what uh, curvature rotation. curvature is a second derivative of any deformed shape so curvature also should be zero at both ends so these are the kind of four conditions every shape function every candidate of a shape function should follow these four things so they he is telling here that okay there is one function sine i pi x over n i can be 1 2 3 4 5 whatever so for example sine uh, pi x over l sine 2 pi x over l and 3 pi x over l all these functions these satisfy these four things if you plot them you will have zero values at here and you will have zero curvature also so for all values of i uh, this function is a candidate of to be the deformed shape at any so it is a candidate of phi just showing here okay uh, in most practice practical problem good approximation of real vibration shape can be achieved by a truncated series uh, i mean in real case you do not go up to up till the infinity you just consider first few shapes okay i hope you you are understanding i mean i am not <laughs> just uh, passing things okay, now see there, there, this is one kind of a discontinuity which I think the discussion started with uh, the basic concepts of strain energy and kinetic energy for any simple case and then something kind of called generalized coordinates and their benefits come in and then again it it is going to the formulation of equation of motion and after this it will again come back to the uh, generalized coordinates and mode shapes again okay so it was necessary i think because we wanted side by side to you to you, you should be able to determine equation of motions as well as understand why we are uh, going to generalize coordinates 
So uh, now I will again go to this variational principle uh, or the principle of uh, virtual work which we also studied in our bachelors that uh, uh, the, the, it, stay, it says that uh, the work done by any non-conservative force, non-conservative means that, um, the, the, if that work was done independent of that if that path is any displacement is just like a gravitational force is a conservative conservative force um, a non-conservative force that um, in whatever direction you uh, lift an object you will have the same work done because you will only consider the vertical distance so work done uh, delta work done the change in and the strain energy their difference is zero this is the principle of virtual work which we studied in bachelors also and this is equivalent this is in, in the form of energy uh, uh, terminology in, in equilibri static equilibrium it is same as the sum of all forces is zero instead of that we are now saying that sum of all the, all the work done or the sum of all the energy is zero so it is equivalent to that uh, static equilibrium thing in, in, in general physics so what I will not explain this but he what he showed here is using a simple spring example he showed that if you apply the virtual work principle on this you will finally get this equation which is the governing equation for this case it means this is one example which is saying that if you apply the energy principles to your actual structures if you really equate the work done and the strain energy uh, equal to zero their difference equal to zero you will finally get an equation which will govern the response of this so it was a static problem you, you get a static equation of motion but this only principle of virtual work will not work in our case where we want have, we have a dynamic problem in our case uh, some higher form of this thing will work uh, one is, uh, is first is called Hamilton's principle and using that principle we will uh, formulate our Lagrange's equation of motion and that is uh, if you apply that to any structure put all the values required in that into that equation solve it you will finally get the equations if, uh, which will govern the response and then if you solve those equations you will finally get the response so Hamilton principle says that the variation of kinetic and potential energy plus a variation of work done by non-conservative forces considered during any time interval t1 or t2 must equal to zero variation of kinetic and potential energy plus the variation of work done by non-conservative forces for any time interval t1 to t2 if you integrate them both of them add them it should come out to be zero something familiar with the with the with the principle of conservation of energy something like that but here it includes both kinetic energy and potential energy and work done by non-conservative force from time t1 to t2 integrated to dt should be equal to zero so um, you apply this equation um, Lagrange's equation of motion to some general terms having t and u uh, we can derive the equation of motion of structures in terms of generalized coordinates by using Lagrange's equation. We have the T of any real structure will depend on U1, U2, U3, U and V1, V2, V3, we know. And because the T formula we already saw in first page that it, it is... Kinetic energy. Yeah. U, it must be U dot because Yeah, but, but U dot depends on this. Okay. So, and uh, U is uh, the strain energy and it depends only on displacement, on displacement because it 1 over 2 KU naught square mm -hmm. and it was 1 over 2 uh, MV square so it depends on velocity, it depends on only displacement if you convert the problem into generalized coordinates it will become you know uh, why I am using this generalized coordinates word uh, Dr. Pennin gave one example once that uh, it is just like if you remember your strength of materials or theory of structures class uh, for, a, for any irregular shape uh, 
plane we have one component of shear stress and one component of direct stress on uh, any plane and uh, you, you, saw, you saw these kind of stress blocks that uh, for example for this you have one sigma and then one tau and at any joint there is one tau here and one tau here, tau x, y, tau y, y x, all these things. You, you uh, uh, have equations which you, from which you can solve one state of stress in strength of materials course. But there was one concept of principal stresses. Uh, if you remember it was like that, if you rotate that whole uh, object into a, into, in, up to a specific angle, all the shear stress components cancel to zero and only the direct stress is acting which is called the principal stress and that angle is the principal plane if you if you remember this what it is I, I just give you an example that for example if it is a uh, if it is a point or of or an area it has all direct stresses and shear stresses also at each for example this and this whatever is the case so at every phase you have shear stresses as well as direct stresses ok uh, but then they, the, the theory tells us that if you rotate this to a specific angle the, the equations become such that all the tau or the shear stresses become uh, zero or cancel each other and only at that angle only the direct stresses act ok and that direct stresses are called uh, principal stresses sigma 1 or sigma 2 and they have equations which you can solve using Mohr circle so it is just like that that uh, this you know uh, this rotation or change in coordinates or uh, rotation of the axis make the problem easier uh, shear stresses all cancel to zero and you are only have to deal with the principal stresses now you will also, I think, the shear, shear. Uh, you you know the diagonal tension term in case of shear of concrete reinforced concrete beams, mm -hmm. and uh, they 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 explain that thing diagonal tension with this concept that if it is a beam, you I think you saw these kind of figures in, and if you take one small patch, you know, one small part of concrete, it will have shear and as well as direct. But if you rotate it like a kind of a in, in the in the diagonal angle, you will only have direct stresses, no shear stresses, and this diagonal uh, force or the direct force is responsible for diagonal cracking. So they explain this with, with the help of uh, principal stresses. So exactly, this is not same, but it is kind of same thing that you are going to another coordinate system from U to Q. Uh, just to make the problem simple so uh, here if T is in terms of U1, U2, U3 you can convert it into some Q1, Q2, Q3 whatever it is and we will select later so now we will use the whole terminology we will use the, the, uh, the notation Q in terms of instead of U so T is a function of uh, displacement and velocity, U is a function of displacement. So work done is equal to force into change in uh, displacement, so delta Q and the total work is the summation of all Q1, Q2, Q3 and you introduce these terms in their general form in the Ham Hamilton's principle and simplify them. Uh, he simplified it, take one term out and did integration by parts. Uh, if, if there are two functions multiply, multiplying and there is total integration on that you will say that okay this is uh, integration of the first function multiplied by uh, first function as it is multiplied by integration of the second minus integral sign same integration of second into derivative of first this is the rule of integration by parts and he simplified and come up with this expression and again uh, and uh, now you can see that this is one whole thing some bracket multiplied by the change in qi integrate from t1 to t2 is equal to 0 this is just form of the equation and equal to 0 uh, it means this bracket is equal to 0 because the generalized coordinates cannot be all 0 
so this bracket is equal to 0 and if you put this bracket equal to 0 and take q on that side of the terms you will find this simple equation this is Lagrange's equation of motion you require uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 things you can say uh, 4 uh, quantities you require and you put it in for any structure you will get a set of equations so i is the number of equations it is not one equation so if you, you have 3 degree of freedom system you require its 4 things uh, uh, 4 terms in fact this term, this term, this term and this term but uh, even prior to that you require t and u in fact so I will say that you require just t and u of your structure the expression for t and u you take the, its derivatives or, or partial uh, and you formulate these four expressions so uh, for example for a three story building simple u1, u2, u3, m1, m2 here in this example uh, it is using the normal coordinates it, I mean it is assuming that u is u1 is equal to q1 u2 is equal to q2 and u3 is equal to q3 no specific um, differentiation between u coordinates and q coordinates but later when he when he uh, writes the equation in uncoupled form he will convert them from q to u here somewhere so ok uh, just quickly I think you already know this thing so t is the sum of the uh, kinetic energies of these three u is the sum of kinetic energies for k2 it's u2 minus u1 it's u3 minus u1 you know this why it is so and total work done is this so you calculate the terms which which are required to be put in the Lagrange's equation one by one uh, calculate the partial uh, things and put in Lagrange's equation you will get this uh, for i is equal to 1 2 3 and write it in equation form you will get this this is exactly what you will get with the D. Lambert's principle as in the example from book I explained this so, term is for damping? T u is your no, no this is not for damping this is for no you cannot explain this with the equation of motion only it, when you solve it it will give you the equation of motion if it didn't use damping is not included here but the sum we cannot uh, differentiate the t and u in, in the sum shot and in sum shot like this uh -huh. yeah, yeah this is the, this is the like a kind of a what the only uh, the only difficulty he he puts in is to how to formulate yeah. this t and u because this is this is his problem in which otherwise you will you can all uh, follow this calculate this partial and put it in equation mm -hmm. so the only thing he can uh, make dif difficult for you for every uh, class he do is that he uh, make a structure such that the u's are uh, dependent on each other for example in this case for example if you consider this degree of freedom so this its u uh, will may affect the assembly such that the its u may affect the other u just like this u u2 or u3 are, or u1 or u2 you have to subtract them because of the, the formulation is such, such that so what I did was yeah what I did was that uh, uh, going through all his past papers I make a list of all possible cases to come up with a kind of a the general rule is that if the structure is such that one displacement is a starting point for other displacement for example if this u m1 moves here mm -hmm. automatically that same u1 m2 will also have and its own elastic displacement will be the difference of u2 minus u1 so if for example i explain it here this is the only difficult thing for exam in case of exam other is easy so this is m1 and this is m2 so if we have a deformed shape like this for example ok this is u1 this is u2 and if someone doesn't consider this coupling or this thing he will just simply write 1 over 2 m u1 dot dot scale plus 1 over 2 m u2 dot dot scale which is wrong uh, bec oh sorry sorry uh, in, in case of acceleration absolute values will be used uh, u1 and u2 
uh, 1 over 2 k uh, what is that k k1 uh, u1 square plus 1 over 2 k u2 square this is right but this is wrong uh, understand this point because this is uh, kinetic energy which is dependent on acceleration and acceleration this mass will have a separate acceleration u1 dot dot scale uh, u1 uh, sorry velocity it's, it's what it must be velocity it's, it's velocity okay and this is also sorry velocity kinetic energy 102 mv scale okay so it will have a separate velocity sorry and it will have a separate velocity so their velocities will add and because you know uh, this is its velocity is not dependent on its velocity or something uh, how should I explain this point ok I, I explain first this and then go to this in case of u this is uh, you, you can say that uh, in case of u uh, you, you, you know the concept of interstory drift how can I the whole thing is okay the whole thing is swinging like this and this is u2 and u1 but that part of u2 which is involved in producing strain energy is is uh, is not for example it is not whole u2 it is u2 minus u1 which is the elastic deformation of only that Story. mass m2 this is m2 m1 uh, elastic deformation of m2 is not whole u2 because uh, uh, how should i okay let me try like this that uh, uh, okay just assume that you have a column here i don't know i will make it more complex or not but okay let me try if you have a kind of a column here uh, its base is moving with 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 m1 okay and its top is moving with m2 okay so the shear or the the kind of a force which will it will experience to deform this column is the difference between its top displacement and the bottom displacement it's not the uh, absolute top displacement because its bottom is also moving so the thing which will produce strain the, the deformation which will produce strain in this column it is just like that assume that this, there is one column which has one node here one node here if you move this as u1 and you move this as u2 how much strain uh, how much static force or strain will the both displacement um, induce in that and the amount of strain will be dependent on u2 minus u1 the difference between these uh, not the actual values of this if u1 is equal to u2 there will be no strain in this ok because both of ends are moving equally so if one is if u1 is 0 then the whole u2 will be used to produce strain but if u1 is not 0 it has some value then u2 minus u1 is the is the displacement which will produce strain or which will produce strain energy so that's why in in strain energy term I uh, you have to consider the connection thing that if um, uh, one uh, story or one level uh, displacement is affecting the other one is affecting the strain of other one this is the general rule in what case can this be too equal there uh, can be one case for example I can give you a real kind of example when the structure is so flexible and it has very high like kind of a number of stories like 40 50 stories mm -hmm. and if an earthquake comes the base will move and it will have a deformed shape like this for example so look the top stories masses are like almost the interstory means the difference of the di displacement on top level is is very small or less or equal to zero maybe so the maybe this m1 m2 both u1 and u2 are equal but as we go down the difference increase so in that case also there will be no you know there will be no significant shear stresses in 
in in the top levels. Okay, so, so you can also see that the, the displacements of each floor are relative to the other. It's yeah, you can, you, uh, there can be more than one ways to say it like this. It mm -hmm. is also true that okay, it is relative to other. Mm -hmm. Or in other terms, you have to actually d determine the displacement which will cause strain energy, mm -hmm. and use that if if it is a displacement which is the difference of two things. Sometimes there are cases depending upon this uh, configuration when you have to consider like four single four degree of freedom system and you have to uh, it is not always three minus two two minus one it can be three minus one also uh, depending upon the so what i did was from past papers whatever i can he will also give you uh, before the end uh, thing so i go through all the cases uh, on one sheet of paper i write the, the i make the drawing and then the actually because he gives the solution also the actually displacement, uh, these T and U terms. For T you don't need to worry because it depends on velocity and velocity, I mean one floor will move with its own velocity and its velocity will not affect the velocity of top uh, or its velocity will not affect the kinetic energy of that top. So both floors will have their own kinetic energies. So, but the strain energy depends on strain value, which is the difference of both displacement top and bottom. So that that coupling you have to consider. So uh, I uh, trial and error method. I come up with this thing, this explanation which I am giving you. I never read it in some paper or so from from past exam from actually having the equations. So. Okay. Uh, so for this system, how can we denote? Uh, okay. For example, uh, there there are two masses, mm -hmm. uh, two degree of freedom. Uh, U is equal to. Okay. First, you have to sum this. This will be K one, mm -hmm. and I think this will be K two. So that is another. Okay. That is another thing. Difficulty here yeah, yeah. because we have to calculate <laughs> K1 and K2 yeah, yeah. total stuff. Yeah, no, uh, <laughs> for this case, uh, this is I think 19, some 1900, 1999 or something. Yes, sir. You took it from some yes, sir. very Last old, old thing. Uh, okay, this is U1. you have to decompose k also because these two are these two okay this is not, these two k is for this m and these three k will be are for this m so in this case even k will be different yes sir k1 uh, and k2 k1 and k2 yeah uh, and uh, it will become like 1 over 2 k1 which is a sum of this two uh, u1 square plus 1 over 2 k uh, now uh, th i think there will be three terms because and both will be in terms of Okay, for example, solution of this k uh, contribution of this k u two minus u one. Get it caught. Some Just let me think. Let me think. For example, if you compare it with simple case. You just simply u2 minus u1, but the whole k is again acting here. Here the you know only this contact is uh, having the same condition as u2 minus u1, but this is not having mm -hmm. the same. So it should be k2 which is the sum of this two only into u2 minus u1 but there will be some additional strain energy which will be 
के या इट विल बी के ओनली दिस थिंग के थ्री यू टू के थ्री यू टू स्क्वेयर फॉर so this is for example m1 and this is for example m2 and it has u2 for example and it has u1 for example so in this case what is happening is that okay for example if this is this stiffness is k1 k2 uh k1 uh what should i say uh, k1 k2 k3 k4 and this is for example k5 we will have for example for this m1 it's obvious uh, it is simple that uh, 1 over 2 u will be 1 over 2 k1 plus k2 into u1 square and then if we just neglect this uh, we will have a, a 1 over 2 k3 plus k4 into u2 minus u1 square because the because the strain which will come from m2 in these two lines will be the difference we will be because of the difference of displacement between u2 and u1 okay uh, and then again we will add this uh, fifth and we will only have u2 u2 because this is only connected with this one and it is not affecting k5 is have nothing to do with the k1 and k2 so i think this will be the u term in my opinion i am not sure it is right or not you can check later maybe i am missing something so what i did was i just like this i for each possible configuration which came in past exams mm -hmm. i write k k and u uh, which he gave or i tried myself also so by this practice i was able to write the right because he will not give exactly something new the in the exam from last few years you can also check that uh, what he does is <clears throat> he every time we change uh, the either the structural configuration or the ei thing or the cross section so there are papers in which he give the same structure but the cross section changes so i changes according to that and it affects whole calculation and uh, whatever question is one thing is that you can always find its components from past exam <laughs> okay for example if you give the structure and change the section you can find that exactly the same section in some other structure of another exam sometimes you can find exactly um, the same section as your exam and sometimes you can exactly find the uh, situation also which corresponds to your case so sometimes he gives the loading exactly same as the uh, some previous but structure is changed mm -hmm. but since the loading is same the response will be same equations all step by step you can directly copy from past exam so he he has a kind of a you know like a puzzle so so he give fun thing from here one thing from here make a new paper but this is what i think <laughs> i mean every new paper is a combination of some past paper but the that combination is not exactly repeated in the past he makes a combination is new but its components he take from past things so this is what uh, the the question i think will come so please do this thing which i did that Well, there whatever number of past exam you can find, you just see how, how much is the. Some are really difficult, which he even put springs in some. So sometimes some you thing. reject, and there is no mass, uh, and only this lambda. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes there is an issue. Uh, some in one case he gave an example where half of the mass uh, have you have to lump on one, consider as a one degree of freedom, and half as a second. It was like this that. 
if it it is this some thing and it was it was only allowed to move in a vertical direction something like that mm -hmm. and yeah this was one degree of freedom in this direction this was one separate degree of freedom in this direction mm -hmm. it was like a case Spring. like this it was something like this that you all consider this uh, movement mm -hmm. It means I don't mass, know. Mass, half of the lump mass lump over there, half of the yeah, lump mass. Yeah, something like this. But they are connected rigidly. Yeah. Or, or uh, it was said that okay, only vertical. It they are confined and only vertical movement is possible. Something like that. So he always find have a new thing. But that small new thing you can find in some other paper also if you have a thorough review of all of his past papers. So we we get like angular structures. Uh, maybe he 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 can give, but in that case, the only thing uh, it will not be that much complex. The only thing will be that some component of mass or weight is uh, considered as a as a seismic weight or as a weight acting which is producing the displacement. Yeah, or you, it will not be like a very complex, just like Dr. Panchit, it will not be like that. It will be, <laughs> it will be just like some cause or some component of that. You, the only new thing will be, instead of considering the whole thing, just consider its cause or sign. Just want to make something new. Like, for example, in this case, can we say that these two are K1 or should we say K1 and K2 mm. if the uh, weight is like I think in this case, uh, hmm. take it separately. Alaina. Hmm? Alaina. In that case, he will, he only allows this movement. Okay, for example, horizontal movement. We he only has cross-sectional thing. He doesn't have length thing. Hmm. You still have to consider that as a one is my opinion. You still have to consider because in order to consider it as a separate degree of freedom system, the condition is that the k's of both degree of freedom systems are acting differently. In this case, both if this movement is allowed, yeah, it both cases will have time. together effect. Yes, That's why I was asking. This is what I think. So, okay, let me please complete this uh, uh, very quickly because it's already, I think, enough for today. Or whatever you think. <laughs> Just at least let me complete the uh, that uh, modal analysis part only. Uh, so, okay, this is this was your exam question. Similar question will come, not in the place in the book. And okay, I will skip this one. And this is again for a continuous structure. He uh, for a beam, he derives T and U, calculates its, its differentials, whatever is required to put in in the Lagrange's equation, and come up with the equation. Probably can we do uh, remaining after 10:30 to, uh, tomorrow mm -hmm. nine, nine till tomorrow nine till 10:30. Hmm? Before you know? first class, before Dr. Panik's class. <laughs> if you don't want to proceed, just a suggestion. Maybe after Dr. Panik. Not in the afternoon, no one will come in the afternoon. Oh, whatever is there, uh, you can always send me a message when you want. Tomorrow night? Or 10th of the month? I think maybe we choose as friends before, but I'm not sure. My availability. My availability. Uh, I, uh, you can consider me available all the time. <laughs> so, uh, That's the best thing. So, you, so you, whatever is you decide later, you can message me on Facebook or uh, you can fix. So, okay, but let me here now. Let me complete okay. uh, because the whole discussion will be uh, will be incomplete. In fact, uh, if I not tell you the final thing, what why what I did is what we really do in modern analysis. Um, the same thing he did, the, the equation of motion he, he derived for a continuous mean. The finite angular method which we are studying is a kind of a um, in intermediate thing between these two approaches. 
having lump mass approach to a to a fine to a to a few number of uh, degrees of freedom and considering an infinite number of degrees of freedom small 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 so it is a in between approach in which instead of uh, using infinite number of degrees of freedom you use some finite number but the notion is same same, same uh, shape functions the basic idea is that okay this lump mass discrete model is easy to solve the global generalized coordinate model or the continuous model is accurate because it considers all the possible uh, modes or whatever so the finite element method takes good things from both of these approaches it takes the simplicity from discrete model and it takes the accuracy from generalized coordinate things so what it says is that you divide your structure into uh, small parts and you calculate the nodal displacement at each node or the, the joining of two elements you calculate at node using the discrete thing and you interpolate between these two nodes using the kind of a generalized function shape function you just assume that the dis the, the variation between 7 and 8 the variation of u or the w in this case between 7 and 8 has this function and using that function you can always find the values in between so and that function which interpolates the displacement or the response of a of an element between the nodal values is called shape function so shape function also should be such that it 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 uh, should uh, follow the boundary conditions of that element or um, for example the, between 7 and 8 the shape function should be such that the value of shape function at 7 is equal to the displacement at 7 and value of shape function at 8 is equal to the nodal displacement at 8 so the, the shape function has values of nodal values at nodes and in between it varies which you can determine this is not mod shape right? this is the shape function uh, shape function when you plot it like a kind of a uh, hole as a whole deformed shape you can call it a mode, mode of vibration yeah, in case of dynamics this is for but a certain given uh, element this is for one element, one yeah. element. yeah. So, uh, but uh, it, it is, it is. Um, you can say that uh, when you consider the whole vibration of overall structure, that all the shape functions uh, they will correspond to a one big mode shape. Okay, because the whole structure will be assembly of small small functions, small small uh, elements each having a shape function. So shape function is a kind of an interpolation function which you assume it is an assumed variation of displacement between two points but since those two points are too close to each other because the element size we assume is very small so that, that variation we can assume no need to uh, no need to explicitly determine it you can determine it also but it is a kind of a variation of this person uh, but it should be it should be proper it, it should not be any function okay 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 uh, I will just skip this again the thing and there is one okay skip this also uh, here in this he proves that mass matrix and now a uh, damping matrix also comes in and k matrix they are all positive definite matrices positive definite means that uh, uh, any matrix a will be positive definite in mathematical terms if there exists a vector such that if a is a matrix if there exists a vector if i multiply this vector x transpose and x here and if it is giving a positive value because if it is n by n this vector will be this x vector will be for example n by 1 and its transpose will be 1 by n so if you determine the final response it will be, it will be a one quantity one fixed number it will be 1 by 1 1 by 1 number if you multiply so a matrix A will be called positive definite if this number is greater than 0 
negative definite if it number is less than zero. This is one property of M K M C. It is used somewhere in next notes. Okay, this is uh, final thing for today. Model analysis. I will just uh, okay. This also probability principle. Up till here, okay. Now this is also important. If you allow me to go up till here, if you are willing to, I will just quickly do it. Okay, because now it's easy. I think for you, if I I already spent a lot of time explaining that. Undamped free vibration of multiple degree of freedom system will have an equation of motion. If in matrix form, it will be this M matrix into generalized coordinates Q1, Q2, Q3 plus K, Q is equal to uh, null matrix. And uh, by analogy to the behavior of single degree of freedom system, the response is just like uh, free vibration response of a single degree of freedom system. It will be uh, sine wave but uh, with a phi vector and n vector that represents the shape of vibration so the uh, overall free free vibration is this but it will have contributions from a lot of free vibrations defined by phi vector okay and if you uh, take its derivative second derivative put it back in the main equation you will get this equation that k phi is equal to omega square m phi this is a classical eigenvalue problem uh, the solution of this uh, are eigenvectors and eigenvalues okay and uh, according to the theory of linear equation a homogeneous system of linear equation okay if i write it in another another form it will be k minus omega square m into phi is equal to a null matrix uh, the classical theory said that this the solution will only exist uh, as a non linear non non linear solution if uh, the determinant of this thing is zero and we uh, if we put forcefully this determinant equal to zero we can get an polynomial of degree n and we can solve it and can five can find the solution omega and uh, uh, it th these omegas are in fact the natural frequencies of uh, vibration uh, with an example of three story building he actually did put this determinant equal to zero and calculate omega uh, now the important thing i want to show is here is that after calculation of this uh, omega you can calculate the phi vectors also which which are the deformed shapes uh, so for example if phi1 is a vector phi1 is the first okay. mode shape uh, have three coordinates phi11 phi12 phi13 for each mass m1 m2 m3 uh, since this is just a shape it is it is not a its value is not have physical meaning because they are generalized coordinates this is this vector is just to characterize the shape its contribution is defined by q another thing so it is just a shape so what what we generally do is for example if this is one shape this is general response and this is one shape which has contribution in this so what we can do is it 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 q1 q2 q3 are the displacement at their respective levels what we do is we forcefully make this top displacement as one and we normalize the other two values such that the other values are other values are such that they can make the top displacement as one so just this is a practice to make the problem easy because this is just a shape how much is its contribution in the final is defined by another quantity so no matter what are its actual values are it is just a uh, values defining the shape so what we do is generally we assume that the first value is 1 and the other two we will calculate we will forcefully i mean equate equate and put it as 1 to calculate the other two so the other two will come such that they will make this as 1 so similar so putting in that eigen value problem we can find phi 1 phi 2 and phi 3 
and if you actually plot these phi1, phi2, phi3 you will get the three mode shapes you will actually see the shape that okay and you will say okay and the and the irregular or the random response at any time can be equal to the summation of these three uh, parts of the solution uh, here for example this is the general solution and depending upon phi value this if there are three phi's then it will be the sum of three phi phi1 phi2 and here also this a is a is a, uh, a factor which says that okay uh, which is in fact the contribution so the, we have three we have six arbitrary constants and uh, three are three came from the solution of a single degree of freedom system theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 and three come from this mode shape uh, so we should need we require six conditions to calculate these for a particular actual structure with fixed values so he just plot here this example was just to show you that how uh, we solve it using phi we solve the three degree of freedom system as a set of single three single degree of freedom systems so this is the general response equation that for free vibration of n degree of freedom undamped system right? yeah this is for undamped system uh, now this is very important thing orthogonality condition without going into derivation uh, i think the, i when i was reading the derivation there was one point which i stuck in and it was very simple that a and b multiplied transpose is equal to b transpose into a transpose this principle i was neglecting and having problem with the derivation but later okay the, the principle itself the, the condition itself says that uh, there is a property of phi vector which which we find and which we which in fact uh, uh, which helps us to uncouple the equation of motion here what we did was uh, we didn't we didn't solve that equation of motion yet we just uh, assume that the uh, displacement of each uh, degree of freedom is equal to and kind of a single degree of freedom with analogy and solve it but now we uh, before we actually going to uncouple that equation of motions we need this thing and uh, what it says is uh, after some doing some mathematics you will come up with this thing that uh, mode shape uh, vector, uh, mode shape matrix has a property it has it has a property that if you transpose it multiplied with m matrix and then again multiply with with mode shape is equal to zero for each i is not equal to j which means you actually for a for a real structure you calculate mode shape vector a mode shape matrix in fact for that you have phi okay you calculate actually the m matrix or k matrix for both it is true m or k matrix and then you transpose it and then multiply with m or k and then again multiply with phi the the condition says and the, the mathematics you can derive it says that at, it will be a it will give up come up with a with zero value for all i is not equal to j means uh, ith row and jth column means i not equal to j means all the terms which are not in diagonal uh, for for diagonal terms i is equal to j 1 1 2 2 3 3 4 4 so all of diagonal terms are zero in this multiplicative answer this is what this condition say you you can go to okay if you multiply the phi vector with m uh, transpose of phi vector with m and again phi you multiply these three matrices you will get all the off diagonal terms as zero off diagonal means which are not in diagonal okay this is the the this is the principle it is saying so doesn't it mean we have two different mode shapes phi i one mode shape phi j another mode shape and no 
let's say if we have this structure and we have uh, let's say this mode shape is phi i and other mode is phi j in, in which he is saying that okay uh, yeah yeah you can so because I because i and because in phi matrix uh, this is total phi matrix n by n each column is representing one mode shape yes, so you can also interpret in, in terms of mode shape because phi 1 1 will be for from first mode phi 2 2 will be from second column and second row yes. will be from second mode yes. you can see if I, uh, 3 3 will be from third mode yes. so okay you can say this but I am uh, you can say that okay one mode is independent of the other this okay. is another interpretation uh, in matrix form I am saying that when you multiply this phi phi matrix whole containing all the shapes yes. transpose it multiply with them again multiply you will get all the you will get a off diagonal, uh, off diagonal terms all zero only we get the term on diagonal yeah you will only get the terms the values on diagonal or other things all will be zero this is i'm uh, you can uncoupled you can say the, yeah this is this helps us to uncouple the equation of motion if you write the equation of motion in such that mass matrices uh, have phi at one side transpose and phi at other side so I will tell in the next page that how it helps but this is a property it is proved you have to check it uh, you know use your own calculation you can spare your time you will find this thing that uh, uh, you will get uh, after the multiplication of this you will get a matrix which will have all the diagonal terms will have only values and others will be zero for i not equal to j same is for m same is for k this is very important observation and this in fact helps us to uncouple the equation of motion so this phi whole thing is converging to this point now and now we will use this we will exploit this uh, okay just uh, uh, the okay 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 from here modal matrix uh, if for example we act he, he now dr panning is showing actually that okay uh, there is phi transpose uh, m oh, it is okay now he is using the he is using the column notate column notation for notating n by n matrix okay it is n by n so uh, just phi have values n by n then m then again this is transpose this is actual you multiply the condition says that all the diagonal terms will have some values and all these things will be zero because i is not equal to j 1 2 1 n similarly 2 2 2 2 will have value 2 3 2 4 2 5 or 1 2 will not have any will have zero values so it means the answer of this matrix the whole multiplication is have the form this some number and uh, diagonal values have all numbers others are zero similarly k if you do with k you will have some number and you will have uh, uh, other values as zero so uh, what is that number that number is in fact the first uh, first multiplied by the first quantity of m multiplied with the first quantity of uh, this thing whatever the matrix multiply this is that number okay so if you call that number as uh, mu i for any diagonal value i is equal to whatever so and for example if you repeat that thing k you will have this uh, mu into omega i square you you can have this thing because it will have this value and this is again you call it mu from previous equation so you can write it as mu omega i square it means uh, that the diagonal terms will have this thing and the diagonal terms for k will have this thing if we can somehow write the equation of motion in matrix form such that it is not only m u dot dot but it has some phi transpose and phi here so then it, this whole matrix will have only diagonal terms similarly if again the k u term if i somehow introduce phi and phi transpose here in the, in the matrix form this will have only diagonal terms so all other terms are zero so you multiply the first diagonal one one with this plus first one one with this equal to force first equation of motion nothing to do with second you again diagonal second term second term third term third term so this is the basic idea of that whole model analysis that we uh, 
normalization. Here he did this. Yeah. See uh, that what he did is this is this is the basic equation. Uh, so much as same i equals to j part for i equals to j it means for the diagonal we have i equals to j and the off diagonal i is not equals to j yeah for off diagonal terms means uh, a2 3 a5 c you can you can explain physically like uh, how can the mode shape off diagonal like if we have uh, one mode shape second mode shape third mode shape fourth mode shape yeah. once you are saying on these on the diagonal all the mode shapes, uh, uh, this mode shape is dependent on this, you are saying like this, i uh, equals to I'm, j. i is equal to j means these terms. They okay. are same? No, they are not same. They they will have only positive values. But say i equals to j. i equal to j means the number of row and the number of column are equal. So this is entry 1, 1. This is entry 2, 2. This is entry 3, 3. Mm -hmm. So i is equal to j, i is equal to j, i is equal to j. Mm. means these will have only values all will be 0 0 0 0 so it means that one mode shape is not affecting the other in physical meaning if you are interested so this this is the like a kind of a property of phi vector it is a property of phi vector that when you transpose it multiply with m or k multiply with again you will get a, a matrix which will have only diagonal terms this property when found out can be used to uncouple the equation of motion. Mm -hmm. So what he did is, this was the original equation. This was the original equation, okay. And okay, now there is one thing I was thinking in notes. It, this I think this should be in U term because uh, Q we were using it for generalized coordinates. Mm -hmm. So okay, what, what, okay, um, uh, okay, uh, I will continue with this. This was the original equation. Okay, and then we decompose Q into combination of mode shape, multiplication of mode shape and its contribution, time varying amplitude, phi into R. Here we he used R as a contribution or time varying amplitude. Previously he was using Q and using U as physical coordinates. Here he starts with Q and decompose it into phi and R, summation of phi and R. Okay, then you replace this Q with phi R thing in matrix form. Q is phi R, phi matrix into R. You replace, you will get this equation. Q instead of Q, you have phi R. Multiply both sides with phi transpose, phi transpose, phi transpose, phi transpose. Why we multiply to make that form diagonal term only form. So now we know from orthogonality principle that this will have this whatever the values are but it will have all off diagonal terms as zero this will have all off diagonal terms as zero and this is some force vector this whole thing is not equal to the actual force okay q was actual force this is now called for one mode now, now uh, somehow we can calculate this we have phi matrix we have q actual force matrix we, we can transpose multiply we will get some vector he called it as r capital r here small r is the response and a double derivative of r this is the form of governing equation which is uncoupled but the problem is it is in the coordinates which have which are not physically i mean the r values you will get by solving these are not the physical displacements you have to again convert back into q Okay. Yeah, it, it depends on uh, the level. Yeah, mm -hmm. if uh, but most of the commercial softwares do this. So this is the essence of modal analysis that by exploiting one property of mode shapes. First, we, what we did, we decompose the response. We can we determine that they have a specific property that they are orthogonal. Orthogonal means that property that thing is a of diagonal terms are zero so using that property we somehow convert the equation of motion uh, although we deform it we change the equation of motion it is not physical in terms of physical coordinates now it is in terms of other coordinates but the form is such that now the equation can be solved one by one solve mode by mode one by one 
so if you first multiply with first row first column first row first column equate it to r1 it will have nothing to do with the 2 2 2 2 mode u1 or r r1 will come only or r1 will be the only r and its derivatives will be the only uh, unknowns in that equation so this is the general equation uh, if you multiply any row with any column and equate it with any that level of r you will get for any i value this is uh, that m m transpose phi m quantity of the first one one or i i uh, term multiplied by some r which is response in generalized coordinates multiplied by this thing which is k a diagonal term of the k matrix into r response is equal to this thing this is called modal equation of motion for multiple degree of freedom this is modal force this is modal stiffness this whole thing this is modal mass for one mode only or ith mode so see now this depending upon the r all the formulas of single degree of freedom system response whatever is applicable to this equation now with changed m k and if you want to include c also in later e include so all the single degree of freedom system response part of your course is now applicable on this equation and this will incorporate one mode in the multiple degree of freedom system you solve this equation mode by mode for first mode modal mass calculate it will be different modal stiffness will be different modal force will be different second mode these three again change third mode again change but change it formula and the response will be same for one particular r force so and finally you will get the you sum them he he writes the solution of equation of motion for one mode ith mode uh, using Duhamel's integral which is used the which is the analytical solution of a, of a random force okay but uh, he give one example here using Duhamel's but every you know depending upon this ri is a harmonic is impulse it is actual ground motion whatever all the single degree of freedom formulas are applicable now so he just gave the general do Hamel's integral which applies to everyone just as an example so once you get r just like you get u in single degree of freedom system here is r you convert back to the original coordinate system using phi vector again so it is exactly similar to taking your problem to another domain solve it there because there that is easier there and then come back the solution again uncoupling of equation of motion is the basic um, notion of uh, structural dynamics of multiple degree of freedom systems so he did it with an example he did it with a cantilever beam also uh, in the I think it, it's directly given. I think. No, 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 he calculated it. Was it given? It was given. Okay. K was also. Uh, A B is okay. Uh, how did he find this one? Stiffness is for each lump, man. I think it was. It was. Maybe. Uh, no, it is not that final. It is a K matrix. Mm -hmm. I think he, he used the, I think it was given, it was uh, given. but if you have to calculate, you have to calculate using finite element approach, uh, using three elements, uh, make the individual and assemble them. But here only one degree of freedom is considered in vertical direction. This is you have to take care of, the other degree of freedom is not. So, but usually if he asks you to solve the multiple degree he gives all mk matrices if he don't give then he don't ask to solve he just asks to to formulate the equation of motion so if you have to calculate you have to go to finite element or maybe that topic which finite element in in structural dynamics part maybe it gives a general equation you apply directly but so okay uh, we will stop here. So, 
that you just explained that they have transformed first this is duty is equals to motion into the amplitude yeah and now they are saying yeah this is what i was saying that he use a different notation here please don't confuse here confuse that first the physical coordinates which has the physical sense the displacement actual displacement he call it as u and he consider q as a generalized coordinate or the contribution or the thing which is contributed is here he use q uh, as a physical coordinate uh, because you know why he, he is also right because uh, and r as a sometimes you know uh, this uh, this q is also coming from somewhere sometimes it is sometimes this q is also not the the uh, physical values this is also some equivalent values and then this is again converted to so okay anyways you can always consider it as a general thing Maybe that here yes. he used u and q as a physical and, and generalized and coordinate here he, he used phi q. and r phi and r as a Q and, e, Q and R. Q is Q the is physical the, coordinate. Yeah, kind and of R is actual the displacement. And R is the generalized. Mm -hmm. You can say. So. And later you have explained that uh, once you find the value of the R, uh, you said once you find the value, we have to transform back. We have to transform back into which equation? Which in which system we have to transform? You just back? inverse the mode vector. This if because if, if you found this value like. Uh, Found th this is the sh uh, shape uh, with the amplitude mm. for that particular frequency. This will be the amplitude R of Z. Uh, R of T will give us the amplitude for a particular frequency. Uh, please say again. So I'm saying R of uh, for a particular frequency, mm. lecture fre uh, frequency, R of T will be will give us the particular amplitude. Oh. Amplitude. Okay. Yeah. And later on, you explain that you will find the value R one of zero. This what is this zero at different times? Is finding the amplitude. Yeah, it, R, it R zero means that initial condition. The it is terrain, saying that terrain. it is saying that amplitude yeah. Amplitude at the, time equals to zero. Yeah, at time is equal to zero. The but R one, R two, R three are the R amplitude, the amplitude for at different, different frequencies. Levels. Different frequencies for different frequencies. Not different. Uh, okay, R I just moved. Yeah, yeah, different frequencies. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So it means that the general uh, boundary conditions for both general and fire, yes, yes, uh, yes. physical coordinates should be same. So, Later on so we using this equation, you are saying yes, inverse. Yes. Take thing. the inverse of the yeah. mode shape. Take, take the it. inverse of mode shape and uh, they are here. Take inverse and multiply it with, with the, uh, the, the amplitude. Uh, no, 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 not in fact in inverse. Yeah, okay, this is the this is the conversion from one to another, whatever. In fact, the mode shape uh, relates to the at the drop it panel, you always used to ask as the amplitude in the final paper. So I don't think we should go, uh, we'll end up here. We know RT, if it, it's a harmonic for our samples. For yeah, three, maybe if the we... Uh, formulas and multiply with that the mode shape and get the max amplitude. Because yeah. Dr. Uh, Dr. Panning always used to ask us. So you have to determine first mode shapes, yes. then uh, formulate equation of motion, motion for ith mode, exactly. then solve it in terms of ith mode. And okay. Based upon that uh, uh, mode shape, we'll find which will be the amplitude, which will be, or which will be the governing frequency, and we'll say this will be the amplitude. That's it. Yeah, maybe he will give if he gives a two degree of freedom system. You yeah. have to yes, do it for in both the modes. Yes, you, he asked us the same thing. He gave us three degree of freedom system, yeah. and based on the frequency and the mode shape, using this equation, we came to know that this mode will govern having the particular amplitude. This, so this will be the amplitude of total structure. That's so it. How can you say? I mean, say that the, that mode will govern. So the uh, I mean, like for example. Uh, okay, the R value, the value of level of R value you are seeing yes, sir. that it will tell us. It will tell us. R will tell okay, us. Yeah. Okay, if you, you, I'll you get can one, think like I'll this. I'll get Q1T, Q2, two, two, Q3T and mm -hmm. we'll multiply mode shift with respect to R1, R2, R3 and by multiplication I'll get one equation, 1, 2, 3 okay. and later I'll say, okay, this will be my maximum to yeah. and based on this. <laughs> you, can, you can say this. So okay, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you. Thank you. We will meet next time. Thank you. Thank you. Next time. How are you? Thank you. 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 Thank you.